Hello everybody and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around fantasy, Premier League. My name's Serge. And my name is James. Today you are grateful, James, of having a day in between the England game and us recording, like Sunday. So you had a recovery day. I wasn't too bad Sunday morning, although the advanced tier patrons for whom I recorded a video for about half past 12 at night would probably beg to differ. (laughs) (laughs) I I can tell how many beers you've had post the game by how many tweets you put out. Ah, shit. The the more beers (laughs) you've had, the more you'll tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. I was like, James had a few today. Not like pissed, pissed, because you don't then go and uh, tweet random stuff but you're like you're happy to have your opinion voiced let's say after a few um four games to talk about um with the friday night games saturday night games and now we look forward to tomorrow i mean semi's already tomorrow it's mad isn't it? and wednesday and then the final but let's not get carried away too much I'm, I'm, looking, forward to Dem- I'm looking forward to Denmark v Spain. What about I you, mean, mate? Do you, you, you're doing well in Euro fantasy. I had a bad week, mainly because post wildcard, all my 50-50s went the wrong way. Um, I, in the end, bottled it, I would say, and went Morata over Lukaku as captain. Didn't work out. I went with uh, Laporte over Jordi Alba because of the yellow card failure i went stones over Maguire. why because of the yellow card failure and i didn't go with harry kane in the end so my 50 50s flopped and as a result i ended up 49 points i'm stuck about 15k or something um but you on the other hand did a bit better yeah every player threw <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> different to the last 16 so i mean i was all in on the four teams who have reached the uh, the semi-final, I say all in, I only had one Spanish player and two Danish player, but no no players from the four teams who went out. So, like many, I captained Morata on Friday. I tweeted at the time because I've seen so many teams captaining Morata. <laughs> I had to tweet and say, we all know he's blanking, yeah, but, we're all, we, we, but we're all still doing it. We talked it. about it on the pod. I was like, I'm not putting myself through it. I'm not putting myself through it. And then when I saw that he was in the team and I convinced myself that the lack of Xhaka made it and it's going to be an easy enough victory for Spain um, go with the logic and uh, regret it so all I had coming out of uh, Friday was uh, Lorenzo Insigne's goal mm. but most people I was seeing teams knocking about with sort of 7-8 played and they were on about 15 yeah, points no, so no like returns literally nothing. at all yeah. so the majority of the returns obviously came from England uh, I had Joachim like most people uh, Joachim Maley's assist but I'd brought in Kane captain 20 point I'd brought in John Stones clean sheet I'd brought in Jordan Pickford clean sheet Morata was the other player I brought in so for the minus four absolutely well worked out obviously I had Raheem Sterling six pointer as well so finished on 57 mm. uh, not the worst week at all uh, little red arrow 1909th overall so, 1,909. Top 500 you're open for? Better, probably. I think top 1K. It's really difficult to make the, the gains now compared to people doing very, very similar things. I mean, mm. I'm in a position now where I've got still... I only had the 11 players this weekend, so I had no subs. Obviously, I can use my five transfers now to bin those four players. Yeah, and Spinozola. And obviously, fix, Spinozola. Right? What mm. a shame that was. Unfortunately, he's going to have to go as well, so... That's where I'm at, and I I will probably go to the full contingent of England. I think, mm. and and gamble that it's going to be an England Italy final. Nice. Uh, I uh, I didn't get to much watch football on Friday because it was my my son's birthday, and we'd booked to go to Harry Potter something world or whatever it's called Harry Potter Studios. So I was out the entire afternoon, but what like watching on my phone the penalty, not watching, but. Uh, text updates on the penalty shootout and what have you Switzerland Spain give us a rundown um, Italy are going to beat this Spanish team aren't they yeah, it's dangerous to think so and write it off I mean I think every England fan who thinks that England will win on Wednesday is already thinking about playing Italy on Sunday which Correct. <laughs> is dangerous in so many ways uh, Spain can definitely beat Italy they shouldn't it is true. I mean, Italy are comfortably the better side at the moment. I think they'll have too much energy for Spain. And this Spain team has big weaknesses defensively in transition. And I think Italy can expose that with the intensity they play at. But we really shouldn't under 
or write off a Spanish side that clearly has good technical players. A couple of injury notes before we talk about the game. Uh, Laporte might be out of the game tomorrow night. You've, you've got, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't. It's it's now fun and games, but with five transfers, I yeah. can I can manage. That well, stuff. the benefit is you will see the team. Yeah, I've only got three Belgian Spinazzola, Laporte to deal with. If you remember to do something when you see the team, I will. And Sarabria might be out as well, although he's the more likely of the two to play. The one thing that obviously, if Laporte is out, it will get them back to balance because Paul Torres can play left-sided centre-back and Eric Garcia will play right-sided and they might argue it's a bit inexperienced but I just hate this whole Laporte playing right-sided centre-back as a left footer he was so much better in the previous game where he could against Croatia where he could step out so I think he'd be a miss I think uh, the two full-backs I think it will be Alba and Azpilicueta again Simon will play in goal I imagine that midfield three Bush gets Pedri and Koke will play. Morata obviously got, what was it, 57 minutes or so? <laughs> Couldn't even mm. make it to 60 minutes, the bastard. Ferran Torres, I would expect to start again. And I think Olmo will probably come in if Sarabia is unavailable. But Spain was slack for the majority of this game. Um, Were they slack or did Switzerland make them look slack? Swiss have had a good tournament. A little bit they'll, of both. They'll go away... I mean, they had a good win against Turkey. Um, obviously, Italy's a difficult game for Switzerland, but then they, they obviously did what they did to France, and now they've given Spain a good run for their money. They'll go away thinking, you know, we've given some good teams a good run for their money and beaten a few of them as well along the way. I think both teams were a bit tired, having gone yeah. through those chaotic games that went to extra time on Monday evening. The statistics tell a little bit of a story, though, so... Um, Spain had 28 shots in the game, 10 on target. Sounds like a lot, except when I tell you that 18 of those shots uh, were in extra, extra time, time yeah. and eight of them on target were in extra time. So two in the whole 90 minutes and eight in 30 minutes of extra time played. Okay. The game obviously had uh, a major bearing for the red card from Remo Froilo was sent off for about 15 minutes to go. Um. Uh, Spain then played the way you expect Spain teams to play. I mean, Bush gets against the man shorts almost like a cheat code, actually, mm. because he's never going to give the ball away when they've just got so much possession at that stage of the game. In uh, in the second half of extra time, they had 87% possession <laughs> Spain. <laughs> Quite laughably, Switzerland had an XG of zero during the extra time period, but had matched Spain basically during the game. It was heroic that they got to penalties mainly because of an outstanding goalkeeping performance from some other hero against uh, France in the knockout stage. You're not quite right, Spain, but the caution is there is some eerie comparisons to the Portugal team of five years ago. That Portugal team only won one game in 90 minutes in the tournament. This Spain team has only won one game in 90 minutes. Even their penalties weren't necessarily great. Um, a few Swiss players let them down, unlike against their penalties were fantastic against France. When it got to penalties, it seemed fated that Switzerland were going to win, actually. But they pulled it through Spain. They're not performing to the level that we would expect. But as we spoke about on Tuesday's podcast last week after the Croatia win, they've got players who can come into the game and impact it and change it. So I think that would be beneficial for them in a, in a game that's likely to be quite tight again. I, no one's expecting Italy Spain to be 4-3 or anything like that. If it is, I'd, I'd very much fancy Italy to win, actually. And I do think that Italy will beat them. But I wouldn't rule Spain out. No, I mean, look, there's a lot of good teams that we thought would go far in the tournament that are out. I mean, France being one. Uh, Italy are, I wouldn't say dropping like flies, but... We talked earlier about peaking too early and now you see a few niggly injuries here and there and you think, OK, do they have the depth? Because you, what you're talking about there is is later in the game. Do they have the depth to bring players in off the bench? Which we'll talk about England when we get to, but when we're bringing off players off the bench and then still leaving Grealish, Foden and so on on the bench, we have depth. Uh, Italy, did they, could they have peaked too early? Um, and the thing with the semi-final is the motivation, like, it's, it, it almost gets this one game and you're in the final, like, just fucking go for this one game, leave it all there. And I think Spain will do that. So the, the prize at the end of a semi is huge um, to get to the finals. They'll give Italy a good game, 
Uh, I don't doubt that. Belgium won Italy too. The golden generation are gone. Chocolate versus pizza, James. <laughs> Belgian chocolate melted. Stella Artois versus Peroni. Exactly. That it was the bit. It was the Lager Derby. <laughs> Go on. Tell me. Um, look, Italy went into a two 0 lead. Uh, Lukaku pulled one back with a pen. I think it was a pen. By the way, a lot of people don't think it was. I, I think Di Lorenzo gives Doku a big, big shove. He was very lively, Jeremy Doku. Um, there'll be certain clubs looking at him, I should imagine. And he was obviously a surprise inclusion. I, I, you, did you gamble for Carrasco? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and up zero points made it easy to sub him out in the end, but doesn't help. So, yeah. Yeah, surprised that he didn't even get on. I think the weakness that I'd highlighted a lot about Belgium came back to get them. Don't like it when players are running at them because at the age of those back three now, Vertonghen, Vermaal and Alderweireld, it goes into retreat mode. And I mean, particularly for Insigne's goal, which is a brilliant goal. Tielemans can't tackle him because he's on a book and he knows he's going to get sent off if he fouls him. But then once he's broken that line, Insigne, one of the defensive players has got to come out because we've said it numerous times. You know what Insigne is going to do. Sometimes it's difficult to stop, don't get me wrong, but everybody knows he's going to look for the curler for the far mm. corner. Get out and stop it. And they didn't. They just retreated, kept retreating. And obviously the way he's finished it's superb. Uh, Barella's goal was great as well. Uh, although many who own Chiesa probably weren't happy at the time as the commentator was showing. Chiesa! No, wrong player, mate. <laughs> and obviously, um, many of you will have seen the brilliant antics of, uh, as Alan Shearer said, you shouldn't laugh, but you can't help. Chiro Immobile, you must have seen this, Serge. No, I haven't seen the highlights. Seen, have you not seen nah, this? tell me. So Immobile goes for a challenge. There's two players, uh, Immobile. I want to say it was Vermaelen. They both put their feet quite high. Immobile goes down running, rolling around on the floor. There's literally nothing happening. Anyway, Italy win the ball back on the edge. Barella dances through, buries it. Brilliant goal. Immobile's there on the floor, and he and obviously here's the no, cheer no, no, I said. No, no, no. I saw uh, I saw this in the highlights yesterday. Actually, he just gets up. He just and gets runs up, and runs off. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, it was. Yeah, we'll talk about this in the England game because I learned a lot about uh, my wife and football watching the England game. Oh, okay. Then we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll get onto yeah. that in a bit. Italy through, though, comfort uh, comfortably enough in the end. The big thing is what's the impact of the Spinozola injury? He's arguably been player of the tournament. It's been so effective for them. We've spoken about the system they go into when they get in high attacking phases. It basically becomes left winger in an attacking five. I guess Emerson, who's Chelsea's third choice left back, comes into the team. 5.5 is an interesting fantasy prospect because obviously if he's going to play and Italy are going to play in the same way, he's, he's going to end up very high up the pitch. It could mean that they alter the way they play in some way. Um, it's just not going to be the same. as I mean, Spinozola is just such a brilliant threat. It's, it's been such a weapon for Italy. Um, did some outstanding performers in midfield I've said to you previously I like the balance more with Locatelli in midfield but I thought mm. Verratti was great he's absolutely top level they deserve to win the game interestingly brilliant stat for you from the Spinozola injury um, from when the game from when he got injured there was 21 minutes um, there was 21 minutes played from when he picked up the injury to the final whistle only nine of those were played as in ball in play Oh from wow! The final twenty-one minutes. It was five minutes added on, which became seven minutes added on. Italy top-level shit has we. I'm, I'm not accusing them of just shit has we because they were the better side uh, in terms of football. They've been the best team in this tournament. But when it got to the crunch at the end, we go to what we know of shit has we. We've got <laughs> top-level players who know how to get a game over the line. In I mean, Chiellini and Bonucci. Still got to be just about the best partnership around, actually, when those two are together. They even managed... Belgium had a free kick, which got retaken because Berardi, who was still sitting around in my team and many others, he came on for his one point. Oh, great, we'll have that. De Bruyne takes a free kick. Berardi blocks it from about four yards away. <laughs> Obviously gets a yellow card. And somehow, between... The retaking of the free kick, Italy managed to make a substitution. I have literally <laughs> no idea how that got allowed oh, to happen. But my. yeah, they were so many delaying tactics. They managed to get over the line of that game. But they're top level. If Italy perform to the best of their ability 
And if Emerson or whomever plays there can kind of at least try and match what Spinozola has been doing, they will win this tournament. I suspect this Spinozola injury is massive, huge in terms of their their attacking output and balance, the impact it might have on Insigne, the impact it might have on them defensively as well, actually, because Emerson's likely to get caught in between the half and half. Do I stay high? Do I have to be a bit more protective? Obviously, if England were to play them and play with, say, Sancho out there, you've got... Put anyone, Sancho or Saka, anyone that runs, yeah, I can see Sancho and Saka causing Emerson all sorts You'd of have to target that space. Final, and Spain, but, I'm sure, will target that space mm, against yeah, them tomorrow Let's night. not get presumptuous that it's an England-Italy final. Because no. we may we have to play Denmark, and that's going to be a difficult game. Now, they've beaten the Czech Republic 2-1. Both had the same number of shots in the game in terms of 11 shots. Czech Republic actually had more of the ball, but I don't read much into that because when you're winning teams seed possession quite yeah, a lot which is in, why it was so games. impressive by the way that Italy still had more of the ball mm. in the game against Belgium and yeah. it was a for the first 70 minutes was a breathtaking watch actually Italy Belgium was a great game Denmark got the important goals what a cross for Mele yeah for Dolberg's goal outside of the ah oh, sexy as uh, fuck yeah, you mate. can watch that kind of thing again and again and again um, but he just puts it on a plate yeah. And the Czechs, who obviously looked so threatening from set pieces and crossing situations, got done by a very simple block on Delaney's mm. goal. Kier just blocks a runner and Delaney's got a free header at it. It doesn't have to do anything other than just direct it on Not target. Mm. Um, I, I felt there was tiredness in Denmark's performance. The second half went by without serious event. I mean, the first half was much better than the second half. I think Denmark were keen to get over the line and were con- consciously worried. I felt in the first half, and it's something England should target, in my opinion, on Wednesday night. I felt in the first half, actually more than the second half, they let crosses come into the box far too easily, Denmark. Mm. Which, from their perspective, with three tall centre-backs in Vestergaard, Kier and Christensen, they probably think, yeah, we can we can deal with that, but... And perhaps from crossing situations other than Kane in open play situations, England don't have um, the targets that Czechs will have. I mean, you're not going to get Rice no. or Phillips breaking into the box the way Suchek and even Hollis no. did during the game as well, actually, in the first half. thing is, though, crosses don't always have to be in the air. And when you've got the, uh, some of the England goals that we scored have been on the ground, people oh. coming in with tappings and so on. Um and even Raheem Sterling scored with his head, mate, and he's shorter than you, probably. So, no it, one's just... shorter than me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I think England still are a threat from from balls coming in from wide, though, because the delivery has been so good. Yeah, uh, I, I, England should beat Denmark, right? They should beat Denmark on Wednesday. I think if both teams played to their maximum, then yeah, we win. Yeah, but this is much tougher than Ukraine. But this Make is, this is no going to be phenomenally tougher. Um, and shout out to Czech Republic again in the similar way to Switzerland. Massively unfancy. I think they've done well to get to where they have in the tournament so far. Um, and again, it's I think the thing with like Czech Republic, Denmark, England, Italy, and I suppose you'd say to a certain degree Spain. I mean, Italy and England are by far the most unified squads in terms of the players all being together and you see that unity and that camaraderie and all of that kind of stuff. And it just goes to show the value and importance in the tournament environment of the team harmony being good. Um, and you can say the same for the Czech Republic and uh, Denmark obviously have been brought together through difficult circumstance, but they have and it's important. So yeah, they're going to be, they're going to really be motivated Denmark, but England should win. It's it's very easy to say it's kind of an emotional carry for Denmark. Like they got fucking good players. Right? They have as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. And everybody will obviously be aware. It's of... Just because we don't see them, because not many come to the Premier League. There's a lot in Italy, right, and places like that. Well, I, I think there's quite a few here. We've, we're obviously familiar with the back three and, and the goalkeeper. So uh, yeah, true. I mean, Kier obviously doesn't play in the Premier League, but he's probably a player people have been familiar with for a long time, actually. Um, we obviously know Hoiberg. We know Martin Braithwaite from Barcelona. We, know a we didn't know a lot about the wing backs. <laughs> I like the Denmark version more than the Tottenham version of Pierre Emil Hoiberg. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know a lot about the wing backs, most people anyway, going into the tournament. We all know about Jockey and Mihaly now. 
who's going to be in the majority of fantasy teams and should stay that way. And if you didn't have him, he's probably still worth the gamble at his price. Jens Stryger Larsson appears to have got the, the the kind of nod now at right wing back. He's not lasting games. He's generally playing sort of 60 or 70 or so. But obviously it was his corner for Delaney's goal as well. So he was certainly taking at least the outswinging corners for Denmark when he was on the pitch on Saturday. It's cheap price as well. I might go with him. Because I like the, from a fancy perspective, I like the idea that if they got to the final, have their two wing backs. Very interesting. And also from a fancy perspective, Dolberg scored again. We weren't sure if he would keep his place ahead of Paulson, but I think deserved to off the back of the two goals against Wales. And he played the 59 minutes. And despite scoring again, I actually think it's the same conundrum. I'm not certain that Dolberg will play again instead of Paulson. Obviously, it's, it's not the game you're going to get to see the team. But for those who have, have lost, say, Lukaku, it's a sensible idea, I think, to buy one of them because of the price. Yep. And then it, it takes away any budget constraints you have. Because you've got to think of it like this as well. When you get to the final you're not going to have three forwards. Almost definitely. Unless it was Denmark. You could you could make a case if it was Denmark, or maybe Spain, you'd go Morata and Marino. Or if it's Denmark, you could go Paulsen and Dolberg. Or I think Braithwaite's a forward, so, yeah. a forward as well. But in the case of uh, England, Italy, it's Immobile and it's Kane. And, and that's kind of the end of it. I noticed uh, Gasparini is a 5.5 million forward for Italy. He's getting bought for the final if they make the final. Right? <laughs> just to just to fucking, make weight. just to take the place on the bench and move the funds. So there is, with that in mind, there is a case to be buying the Danish forwards. I think they're they're a good side. It, I think everybody thinks it's going to be high energy on Wednesday, and I think it will. But I also think Denmark could be very conscious of the attacking threat that England pose, and I think there will be some caution in their play. And talking about the mighty England, the three Lions, I mean, it was a. Uh, the, the, what I felt at half time was control, uh, absolute control of a game of football, massively helped by the early goal. But I think England um, created that. Where, where I was a little uh, frustrated against Germany was tempo at the start of the game. It was two touch football. It was two seconds rather than one second and making your passes. We came out against Ukraine much quicker in the way that we were moving the ball. And to be honest, in the first like five, ten minutes, Ukraine sat in deep. You could just see 11 men behind the ball and you're like, okay, this is going to be a slog, isn't it? But that early goal broke that kind of uh, nervousness or oh, it's going to be a slog to break these guys down. And then after that, just knocking the ball around for fun, to be honest with you. Just controlling the game of football around the back and biding our time every now and then. Increase the tempo um, and, and created chances. Let's not forget Ukraine did have a few chances in the first half, probably through lack of concentration and a bit of sloppiness giving them away. And then second half starts and two goals in the first six, seven minutes and that's it. Game game was already over in my opinion just because of the control England had. Um, but then it was done and dusted. And don't forget these guys had 120 minutes midweek and we hadn't. We spoke about yeah. they were So England now, and five stuff, games yeah. in, haven't conceded a goal yet. 1-4, drawn one. Um, and look fresh. Managed to make five substitutions in that second half and took off no, no, no suspension issues. I'm right in saying no injury issues. All twenty six of it. Um, team spirit looks immense, and Harry Kane's back in form. Fuck me if that left footed volley had gone. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was gonna fucking have a wank over that goal. I'm telling you, mate, that was fucking beautiful. I mean, beautiful. You, you look at it, and you keep thinking it's going in. I just made, yeah. I made, so, just 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 go down the park but, and try it out with your bad foot I'm, uh, while you're on the run running towards yeah, it as well phenomenal hit just everything is going in the right direction which is why again caution because because yes. Wednesday's is going to be a tough game we said and I th- we didn't have any doubt we were going to win this game really did we and no it's almost at the point I think if it wasn't England we'd be going 
they're definitely going to win. But we didn't really want to say no, that, did we? No, no. There was there was never a worry before the game, during the game. I mean, as soon as we scored, I was thinking, in the fucking bag, yeah. As long as we don't just kind of put up shelter and go too defensive and stuff. They were weak opposition. Very, very weak. Just remember, they got beat by Austria in the group stage. They got beat by the Dutch. We said on uh, Wednesday's podcast that they probably got over the line against Sweden because of Danielson's red card. Weak opposition who were walking wounded, admittedly. Um, but England took them apart and I think sensed that Ukraine were going to go into the game with weakness and the major, major difference into England's play as opposed to the other games was the intensity off the ball. This was proper pressing. So there was structured pressing um, in the wing-back areas in the Germany game, but it was a lot more cautious centrally because of the system we were playing, obviously, with a back three. This time, Sterling, Mount and Sancho could really go after Ukraine's back line, which for long periods of the, of the first half hour, they just couldn't get out of a back five. They had two moments in the game, Ukraine. One, because Cole Walker can't go through a 90 minutes without having a fucking brain fart moment. He has to. Um, I really like Yarmchuk up front we, oh, we spoke about it yeah man. I think he'd do, he is, he'd I think do well he, in the Premier League yeah exactly 100%. that I think he would I was would. thinking you know what you you and if if say West Ham bought him I'd be like I'd play Yarmolenko Yarm, Yarm, if we bought Yarmolenko just to have the two together because they do have a good chemistry and a partnership together sometimes you find players work well in pairs I'll ask I, you I, in I a, like him. when that happens I'll ask you what you're doing with Antonio <laughs> <laughs> well look Antonio will be on the fucking treatment table, mate. <laughs> and the only other moment they really had in the game was they changed system immediately, Ukraine, when Kristoff went off injured around the 35-minute mark. Instantly went to basically a 4-4-2. And they had a little spell in the game. And there was a little bit of nerves around me in the pub. And I was saying, look, they've changed system. England just need to work it out, get to half-time, still be winning, relax, it's fine. And we've spoken about Southgate and the concern about will he change in-game tactics. This was very subtle, but Mason Mount went in deep for that 10 minutes with Rice and Phillips. And the one great move that Ukraine had, it was Mason Mount back in the box, who generally during defensive phases had, shut down had basically been playing centre-forward with mm. Kane in defensive plays when Ukraine had the ball deep. He was the one back in the box, decisively got the block in, then won the ball, and then we were off playing mm. again. And that was it. And obviously the crucial second goal, the timing of the goals is pivotal, Perfect, right? Kane scores so early, brilliant assist from Raz. And the second goal beautifully delivered by Luke Shaw. I didn't celebrate it because I thought Maguire was offside. I knew he was ahead of his man. I thought I oh, thought he was clearly on, to be honest. Not, with you. not I sure about that. I was I was happy once the sort of replay, we could go mm. for it then. Um and then to get the third only minutes later, and, and the third goal again, Sancho intercepts a pass. Play it inside, mounts away, and mounts brilliant, just carrying the ball, carrying the ball. And you can see this wave of England players coming. It's like, we haven't had this in a game. We've had individual moments like Saka's run against Czech Republic. But actually, that wave of, oh, we're at 2-0 up and we're going for the kill here. Mounting Sterling, Sterling Liberties, brilliant cross from short. As it comes over, I'm already celebrating, you know, mate. It's going in. He's not going to miss, mate. No, 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 no chance. <laughs> Um, and then obviously the, the the fourth as well. Jordan, and it's nice to see him score a goal for England. I mean, that kind of summed Ukraine but up it in was, the fact that it's just a simple man-v-man job and your man lets him have a free yeah, run at it. It, it. He's not even one of the biggest players. No, no. I learned, uh, I learned a lot about my wife and football. So she... I, I, in 12 <sighs> years, we might have watched two games or three games together, okay. barely. So it's not a common shared pastime. But obviously this game, we're sitting up watching it together she doesn't um really massively understand all of the rules about football but fouls fuck me when england players get fouled she treats it like personal assassination assault. yeah yeah <laughs> and even it's not even if there's a foul it's like if a player goes down she's shouting at the tv like i've never she's like oi what do you think you're doing it's like as if someone's um down, you're down on the street and you see someone mugging someone and she's like shout oi what do you think you're doing you're like you know firstly they can't hear you secondly <laughs> like Mount in the f opening few minutes when he went down it wasn't a penalty straight away for her it was like that Ukrainian player needs to be sent off straight away um, 
and and any foul we were, is a personal we, we were still talking about that in, in terms of was there a review going on for the mount penalty and obviously we scored right yeah, that yeah. very quickly got forgotten it's not pretend that england players don't go down easy either just for you know balance balance um, we know uh, mount probably yeah. went down easy in that instance harry kane on the second goal although mm. his foot does get trodden on but yeah. there's no need for harry to go down no. the way he does but listen it's uh gamesmanship and it's what everybody does at the top level yeah. and if he doesn't go down he doesn't get a free kick mm. if he gets his foot trod on and doesn't go down he's not getting yeah. a free kick is he we've spoken about this unfortunately that's the way the game is I spent the the large parts of the game especially because we were so comfortably winning I don't know if you do this with a Spurs bias just watching Declan Rice play because he's my West Ham guy well, did, there's the game is fine did you turn the game off for the last half <laughs> and, uh, and obviously I was grateful that watching Yarmolenko was you um <laughs> But but just watching him play because I was just trying to understand what, what England haven't conceded a goal all tournament and if they play like this I mean obviously it's going to be difficult but they, they are so solid defensively because he doesn't it, he literally stays in between the back four and the halfway line he doesn't go anywhere with West Ham he has a lot more license to move forward and and, and what have you but he just seems to be able to sense danger drift left drift right cover the space that's missing, make the interceptions and tackles. And he doesn't make a lot. It's not like he's making 10 interceptions a game. It's twos, threes, fours, but always at the right time. And I was just trying to understand, like, what's he doing differently with England than West Ham? He doesn't have that same free free license with England, but it's so essential to just help the rest of the squad do whatever they want to do to have that guy always there it just feels like you've got an extra man always there defensively I can really see England again keeping a clean sheet because we've been so solid defensively and it massively helps he's played several different roles for England in this tournament which is kind of marking him and Calvin Phillips out to be even more impressive to than what it is to the naked eye so I mean against Germany obviously with the back three behind them there was a great response beyond on them to get kind of in the face of mm. Cruz and Goretzka press because he didn't press in this game, no, really, because he didn't need no, to. No, it came from the front. And mm. what was important was obviously, we. this was the first game really where we'd got both fullbacks really high. I mean, Luke Shaw was particularly noticeable, but Cole Walker did a lot of the same on the right-hand yep. side, offering kind of high positions in a back four. We'd seen that in a back three, not in a back four. Maguire and Stone split quite a lot. So obviously, because Maguire's really good at carrying the ball out and kind of mm. drawing, it draws people to him and then releases the pass. Yep. Rice sat. Whenever one of the fullbacks went higher, or particularly if both did, you could kind of mark Maguire and Stone split and you could almost draw a triangle and Rice would be at the point of it in mm. front. It was never Phillips, it was always Rice. So we've spoken pre-tournament about this kind of six, eight, and then a 10 role yep. where we've seen more kind of Rice and Phillips in most games side by side. This was again Rice just a little bit deep heights to allow the kind of aggressive nature of the fullbacks. Yep. Phillips ahead of that, Mason Mount really Even high. Up. That dominance that we've spoken about in terms of the way England lean into the left side with their attacking play which draws people over what we had differently in this game of course was the outlet of Jaden Sancho mm-hmm. um, love him I love the fact that he, he can go from kind of slow pace to just he releases a bit of a tempo with a shoulder drop or something he's gone Southgate spoke um, after the game about Sancho being a specific selection for this game mm. because they wanted a right-footed player to play on the right. Now, I think a lot of people going, we could have played Sterling on the right and Jack Grealish on the left would be what some people are saying. <sighs> yeah. But Jaden played great. Yeah. It'll be difficult to it'll be difficult to drop him now. I suspect well, it's difficult to drop Saka off his performance. Well, Saka but... wasn't uh, a sub, was he? He did have no. a niggle injury, oh, so it was he? kind of the. An easy get out here. But I think this is what Southgate was yeah. going to do anyway, right? Mm. So it worked It worked for all involved. Raheem Sterling was fantastic. That's Raz at his best. 100%. So direct, particularly mm. in that first half, facing people up. I'm going to go at you. Sometimes he frustrates. We, we again, we spoke about this in the group stage about had Italy peaked too soon because they've been the best team in the tournament. Yep. Let's not pretend otherwise. And could England build to something? Well, now that feels like England are building to something, right? Mm. No one's got any complaints with the way they played on Saturday. Yeah, they? I, I was actually happy that Grealish didn't come on. Uh, and I feel for Jack Grealish, he's going to want as many minutes as he can, right? Jack but will I, still be involved. We didn't need him this game. Had he come on, we would have fucked Ukraine 6-0, I reckon, because of the chances he would have created. But we didn't need him. 
Keep him fresh because we will need him in the next round and the final. Keep him up your sleeve. The one is, I don't see how Foden's going to get minutes back. I'm, I'm, it's, it's like, he's good it's like enough, Foden's been left out for three games because he's been on a booking. It's a bit weird. It's, uh, uh, sure, he's good enough. But where I don't know who you drop for him right now. Well, if you, so if embarrassment you, of riches at the moment. If you think back to what we spoke about after the Scotland game, and I spoke about the link that possibly Foden might not be a good player for Kane, mm. and it might literally be down to that. The relationship and the chemistry just might not be there for those two players, and it's purely because of everything that's... It's not a fault of Phil Foden. It's everything that's been ingrained in him and his coaching, his development, the style under Guardiola, everything that the instinct is always keep the ball, keep the ball, keep the ball, recycle, etc. And City don't have that target, but they might do in a couple of months. But at the moment, they don't have that kind of cane target. We think, oh, I'll, I'll whip it in, I'll feed body balls into him and play off him and stuff. And that's why I, I think Phil Foden's currently found himself out of the team. It's not coincidental that people like Sterling, etc. have been getting closer to him. Even we spoke about Saka getting close in the Czech Republic game. Slowly, Harry's performances have been getting better. And it's quite simple. Get the ball to him. and <laughs> He'll do his thing. Mm. You know me, I never doubt the guy up Yeah, front. I mean, I, that's why, I mean, people saying he should be dropped. I was like, well, why? And very few people actually said that it was because of form. That it was more because the England system didn't suit him. I was like, but... We've been here how many times before where he's been doubted and he's come back. Um, so just leave it be. He'll sort it out. And now no one's going to be talking about dropping Harry Kane, are they? Very, very good performance all round. I think we could we could talk about it for a while. But everything about it, I think I, I'm taking away things like uh, Harry Maguire is a better football player than I thought he was. I'm learning about that. The only thing is Pickford... He went back to, a little bit to angry Pickford in certain he had a moments, moment, didn't he? and so I'm just like, you know what? You need to, you know, half time smoke a spliff or something because you need to chill it's out. Just a bit bored, I think. Yeah. Um, so there were a few moments, but you, you're you're literally looking for things now. My only complaint in the game was that he brought Trippier on instead of Ben Chilwell. <laughs> it was basically <laughs> my only complaint. I didn't understand, like, give Calvert-Lewin some minutes and stuff. Yeah. Give Jude Bellingham some minutes. But it was my only complaint. I didn't understand why Trippier came on at left-back rather than Ben Chilwell. I thought, give him some minutes, let him feel like he's a part of it and stuff. And that's interesting as well, because I think pre-tournament, even I'd said to you last week, I wouldn't be surprised if Chilwell plays. Is it Who's not had minutes now? Um... Oh, I'd have to go through the squad. I mean, Centre-back. Ben, 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 ben Chilwell, White. Connor Cody, obviously the two goalkeepers. Mm. Um, that's most, it. I think most I think, have had minutes now. I think they? everybody else has had minutes. I want to say, yeah. Yeah. So, but listen, they're not going to beat Connor Cody and uh, Mings. And well, Cody no, and they're, they're, with Cody and White away. and stuff is just a backup in case you have a central defensive crisis. I, I did feel like you could have given Ben Chilwell 15, 20 minutes personally, but. Oh, well, he's the he's the boss, Gareth. I, can we accept that he just fucking knows better than all of us, right? Can we? It, I think uh, the other thing I've taken away, like in terms of Maguire being a better footballer than I gave him credit for, was um, how tactically aware the England team are. They they, it's not exciting. Sometimes you have to do a job that's not necessarily exciting, but they are tactically very aware. They know what they're doing on the pitch because they've been drilled well. So there's now a little bit more trust in their own game management and being able to, to pick it out. Um, so, yeah, I'm quietly confident that we can beat Denmark. And once you're in the final, it's the final, right? I think then then it's like stand up and be counted or or you go away with a silver medal or whatever they get. We'll, um, we'll preview it properly tomorrow and I'll preview why I think England will go with a back four again. Because it just works better. <laughs> and not always. I can understand when a no. back five works better. But I, I mean, yeah. If you said to me now, who do you want a four or five, four, four all day long? I think most people would prefer a four. Mm. I think people accepted what worked against Germany. And there's a case because the Denmark system to go and match that up. But I, I think we'll go with a four again. Mm, there we go. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's podcast after a fantastic weekend of football. Nothing today, but tomorrow we will look at the uh, Italy-Spain semi and as James mentioned, uh, James mentioned as well, the uh, England-Denmark game. 
Uh, and James, you can reveal what you're doing with your five transfers. I'll reveal what I'm doing with mine. I still want to get like top 5K or something. I'm 15K. It's not I, like the worst. I say we'll reveal. We're obviously going to wait till we get the early They're Spain team lineups. News. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah Subject we'll, we'll, to team news. I haven't. Asterisk. I honestly haven't even looked out. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanted to support us uh, and all the content we put out on Patreon, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash planet FPL. We'll be doing our Q&A today. Uh, we haven't even spoken about the rest of this week. Is there a Tottenham coming this week? There should be with Nuno um, and the Declan Rice nonsense. No, I'm going to do an Ask James for the patrons at the weekend. I was thinking rather than doing a Tottenham, we might do a, a special on all four of the new managers. Yeah, that sounds actually an also an interesting thing. I saw some interesting polls um, on Twitter and stuff. People Mig, thinking who, Mig put Mig, a, Mig who, put who's a, the most <laughs> exciting. Benitez was winning when I voted. Mig Tavius put a poll out. Our Crystal Palace correspondent after Vieira got announced yesterday of which who, we've known who, for about a week or so. Yeah, who was the most exciting of the four appointments? And even I read it and went for none of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we we can do that definitely, um, and and. Uh, we have more content on there for everybody. Uh, other than that, though, most importantly, stay safe wherever you are. Chat for now. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the football, of which there is none today. Cue music, please, man-child.